New feature changes to smartphones year after year has really slowed down these days. As a result, I'm still perfectly happy with my iPhone 13 and 13 mini, and this video should help you decide which one would best fit your needs. Just like my other iPhone comparison videos, I will be doing a full comprehensive comparison on what are the same, the key differences, and which model would best fit your needs. So feel free to skip around based on the sections also outlined in this video if you're looking for something specific. But let's start out with what's the same. Well, a lot of it. You're able to view a pretty good list on Apple's website, but here are the highlights. So for your storage options, they both come in 128, 256, and 512 gigabyte options. And at release, these were the prices. The 13 mini was cheaper by $100 for each of the storage options. And then in terms of color options, they're the same across the board, including the product red. As for what comes in the box, I did do separate unboxing videos for each of them. So if you want to see an in-depth look at what they look like brand new, you can check out videos on that. But the fronts are a true-to-life scale of the actual phones, including a little bit of embossing of the phone plus the camera bumps, which is actually a nice touch. And then you see iPhone and the Apple logo on the sides in black across for every color option. On the backs, you can see what they come with and the options for each of the models. And I do have the 256 gigabyte option on the 13 mini versus the 128 gigabyte option on the 13, but everything else is the same feature wise. Opening it up, you can see the inside of the lids actually even have an indention for the camera bump. And so right on top are the actual phones themselves and they just have one protective film over just the front. As for their accessories, it's incredibly similar. They both have the one meter long USB-C to lightning cable, the pouch containing some of the paperwork's SIM tray ejector and Apple stickers are a little bit different in size, obviously a little bit smaller on the mini, but otherwise they're very similar. You do see that the Apple sticker even is a little bit smaller than what is found for the 13, but not many people realize that. So size is definitely one of the main differences between the two, obviously, but from actually owning both phones, there are actually more differences than you would think. But before we talk about those, let's still keep at what is the same. In terms of the hardware design, they both have a glossy glass back with a frosted matte glass camera bump that does protrude out quite a bit. They have aluminum side rails, both have dual SIM capabilities with one nano physical SIM, one eSIM, or two eSIMs. And actually, the iPhone 13 lineup is the last iPhone sold in the US that has this physical SIM tray capability. Moving forward, all iPhones sold in the US will only support eSIM. At this point though, the iPhone 13 and 13 mini both don't have a headphone jack, but they also have IP68 water resistance. They both have Bluetooth 5.0, not the latest 5.3. They both can support 5G antenna band speeds. They have NFC for mobile wallet payments. Both have the same newer face ID technology, which is much better than the first gen, and it can work with even a mask on. They both support OLED screens with a very high pixel density and really high contrast ratio. They both have haptic touch and they have something called ceramic shield, which is a little bit harder than the normal glass that iPhone had previously had. But I still rock screen protectors on my phones regardless, just because I know there's still things that will scratch my phone or if I drop it, it will still crack. As a result, I've put on so many screen protectors, so I've really gotten the process down to a science. I'll be making a future video on how to install your screen protector perfectly, so definitely subscribe if you're interested in that. But underneath these screens, these iPhones both rock a A15 Bionic 6-core CPU, 4-core GPU. So this will be supporting quite a number of future software updates for years to come. It also has a number of different ways to charge, including, of course, the regular wire charging via lightning, but also wireless Qi charging and also their MagSafe technology, which I really like because the magnets easily align and with compatible charging stands or car phone mounts, it makes the snapping of the phones onto these mounts a breeze. There's also some fast charging built in here. So at 20 watts, you can get 50% of the battery charged in just 30 minutes. And they also both have this new SOS emergency feature. 
Talking about the cameras, they both have the exact same camera hardware. They have dual megapixel wide and ultra wide rear cameras and support half and 1x optical zooms. They both have night photography and they both still have that green glitter issue. They can have the photographic styles to customize the default um, color temperatures of your photos. They both have portrait mode with that bokeh effect and portrait lightings and stereo recording. So just doing a quick photo and video comparison here. So as to be expected, photos and videos are very similar. Though I did notice on the 13 mini for whatever reason, at least for this particular shot, it had a lot of difficulty focusing on the wheels of this tech deck. I took a few shots, only the two best ones shown here, but it's still not as desirable as the 13. And I don't know if that's just my particular machine that I got or all 13 minis have this issue, but you're really nitpicking here. Everything else is pretty much the same. I mean, HDR photos, video look pretty much the same. Macro photography, the night modes on both of these are also pretty comparable. Close-up shots, portrait shots are all pretty similar. I mean, they're all quite good. And I also do appreciate the various different video options, including 4K up to 60 frames per second. Slow-mo up to 240 frames per second at 1080p, the cinematic mode. So these are all a lot of great capabilities found on the 13 lineup. For the front-facing camera, there is 12 megapixels with an f2.2 aperture. They again have the portrait mode with the bokeh effects. And you still have the animoji or memoji if you're into that. There's night mode now and there's photographic styles and the cinematic mode, which is pretty cool by changing the focus from the subject to something in the background and vice versa. As for their software performance, since they both have the exact same chip, the processor benchmarks are super similar. And actually in this case, the iPhone 13 mini wins out a little bit, but that's also possibly due to the fact that I have a larger storage option on this one. Again, I have 256 gigs on the mini and only 128 on the 13. But in terms of like loading YouTube videos or gaming performance, I mean, the difference is very negligible if there is any. So I guess what I'm getting at is these are both very capable, powerful phones, even in 2023. So now let's talk about the main differences between the two and why you would choose one over the other. So obviously the elephant in the room is that screen size. The 13 has a 6.1 inch screen versus the 5.4 inch found on the 13 mini. And obviously the overall form factor for the 13 mini is smaller. So it's much more one handable. And for me, as someone who has pretty small hands, the iPhone 13 mini is really the perfect size for me. For most everyday tasks like opening apps, checking emails, sending messages, the mini is perfect for me. Of course, where there is a slight advantage to having a bigger screen is when you're watching things like videos, YouTube videos, or using it as a GPS. The slightly larger size of the 13 does make two-handed typing a little bit easier or two-thumb typing a little bit easier. But I also prefer to use the swipe typing method, in which case having it a one-handed device like the iPhone 13 mini makes swipe typing a lot easier than the 13. So it just kind of depends on how you like to type. But what a lot of people don't realize is despite this iPhone 13 mini being a small phone, the screen size is actually not that small, especially if you compare it with like even the current generation of the iPhone SE, which is in the body of the iPhone 8. So it has a lot bigger screen size than the 4.7 inch screen found on the iPhone 8, while still having an overall footprint much smaller than the iPhone 8 or iPhone SE. And even the plus size iPhones of like the 8, the 6, the 7s, those had only a screen size of 5.5 inches. And remember the iPhone 13 mini has a 5.4 inch screen size. So really what you're getting here is a much more capable phone with a pretty good screen size in a very compact form. That smaller form factor also translates to less weight, as you can see the weight differences between the two. 
And something I noticed after owning both of these phones is because the iPhone 13 mini is lighter, I'm able to place it onto a MagSafe charging stand and it always pretty much charges without any alignment issues. I did find a little bit of alignment issues sometimes when I charge it using my 13. You can see here, for example, the charging stand is just a little bit confused. It's like charging it and then stops charging it and then starts charging it. So. That's just a small nuance uh, advantage, I guess, to the 13 mini. But also, because of the smaller form factor of the 13 mini, unfortunately, the speakers definitely don't sound as good as on the full 13. So here's just a quick sound test comparison. <laughs> As a result, I end up actually using the 13 for my alarm more than my 13 mini because the alarm just doesn't sound as harsh on the 13. The battery life on the 13 mini also isn't as good as you can imagine on, as on the 13, but I have to say that it is worlds better than the 12 mini, which did have some battery life shortage issues. So I can still get through a whole day with you know my general use, web browsing, checking emails, sending messages, phone calls, that sort of thing. So the battery life isn't a particular problem for me. And while Apple no longer sells the 13 mini in their stores, you may still find them in retail stores. And in general, they will be cheaper than the iPhone 13. So to wrap things up, which one should you get? So personally, I'm rocking the 13 mini as my personal phone and the 13 is actually my work phone. So I use both of these phones simultaneously on a daily basis. I would say I like the 13 in that it has more screen real estate. I do like using it more for GPS or watching videos and I don't need to pay the extra money to get the Pro Max because I don't need the features of the Pro. It has better battery life and it is more suitable for larger hands which I don't have which is why I went with the 13 mini for my personal phone. And what I really like about the 13 mini though is it has pretty much the entire feature set of the 13 in a much more pocketable lightweight form factor not to mention it's cheaper can't beat that that's why i could pay for more storage and still get a relatively cheap phone so i think it's a real shame that not enough people can appreciate the minis and therefore apple has discontinued the mini series unless they bring it back as a se edition which i really hope they do so for now if you want to get a mini iphone the 13 mini is the best one to get and you can probably find some pretty good deals online but that's been it on this full comparison between the 13 and 13 mini check out my other comparison videos that i've done in the past and other product unboxing and reviews thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos